to the Talent Optimization Podcast, the go-to podcast for CEOs and HR professionals wanting to bridge the gap between the strategy and tactical implementation of talent optimization within their organizations. Through interviews, predictive index, and personal experience, your host, Tracy Shirk, helps you discover the facets of talent optimization from both a CEO and HR perspective to truly create the dream team for your organization. Are you ready? Let's get started. What motivates you to do outstanding work? That is a really important question, and we're going to dig into that today as we talk about performance, leadership, and accountability. My name is Tracy Shirk, and I'm the Chief Talent Officer here at Elevated Talent Consulting. So welcome to the Talent Optimization Podcast. And here's the thing. Fewer than 30% of employees strongly agree that their performance is managed in a way that motivates them to do outstanding work. And that came from a Gallup survey. So what exactly motivates employees to do outstanding work? And here's the thing. Partially, it is going to depend upon who the employee is and what's important to them. Meaning, are they driven by external rewards? Meaning, hey, that Facebook post or the LinkedIn post with a picture that's having them being seen and recognized publicly? Are they someone that is really, really interested in that recognition privately? Are they someone that needs to be told exactly what to do? Or are they someone that is going to benefit more from a coaching approach? So as we look at performance, leadership, and accountability, what we know is that as leaders inside of our organizations, we have an obligation to create the container for our staff to be successful. And it is still a right and a choice for our staff to choose to be successful and fulfilled in their role. But as leaders, there are several things that we can do to really pay attention to. How are we fostering, mentoring, coaching, and leading our staff? And there's a couple different things that we love to look at, right? And we're going to look at how much accountability are we providing our staff and how much support are we providing them? Because when we can provide that high level accountability and that high level of support for them to do their best work and really stretch themselves into roles and or tasks and or situations that they didn't think was possible, what we're doing is we are increasing their ability to perform at the highest level by still giving them that support to do that. So what exactly does high accountability look like, right? And one of the key things that we see in the consulting that we do with our clients is that high level of accountability first starts with clarity on what are the goals that we're trying to reach, right? Like if we don't know exactly where we're going, we're not going to get there. I love to say, hey, we've got, you know, a map of the United States and we're going to go on vacation. If I decide that we're going to California and my husband decides that we're going to Florida, guess what? We are going to be in a fight before we even get off the interstate on I-90 out of our little teeny tiny town of Blake, Wisconsin, right? So we need to understand where are we going? What are those goals? What are those metrics to the goals? What is the by when of those goals? And then having those check-ins with our staff to show, hey, here is what I'm expecting, but here's also that check-in. Those check-ins provide a significant amount of support in the way our employees specifically need. You know, and as we talk about this performance leadership and accountability, one of the key items that we see so often in human resources that is definitely something that kind of goes back and forth on, should we do this or should we not do this, is the annual review. And here's the thing with annual reviews, they're falling out of favor, right? So 82% of organizations conducted an annual review in 2016, 
And only 54% of organizations conducted performance evaluations, annual performance evaluations in 2019. And that came from a work human survey. So when we look at what is the role of our performance evaluations and, you know, how do we really lead individuals to be accountable? Are these one and the same? Are these different? What is it exactly? And, you know, one of the things that we always ask our clients when we're working with them is why are you doing performance appraisals? What is the purpose? Because if you can answer that question of what is the purpose of our annual performance review, then we can create a process to meet that need and intention. So if the purpose of an annual performance evaluation is to give feedback to employees, guess what? There's probably a much, much better way to give feedback to staff than through an annual employee evaluation. Because guess what? What we so find is that individuals do not feel like they're getting support through the annual performance evaluation. Because so often, guess what? It is a surprise. It's not something that they are seeing as valuable. And quite honestly, if we're giving feedback at the end of the year of something that happened 10 months ago, guess what? We've lost the learning opportunity and they can't do anything about it, right? So when we look at it for that reason, the annual performance appraisal may not be a really great tool. So what else are our performance appraisals used for? And sometimes our performance appraisals are used to give merit increases. You know, we definitely want to divorce that performance appraisal from the merit increase because guess what? That really clouds the conversation that's happening. And we really can't set goals, you know, do any reflection that's meaningful if all we're thinking about is what's the dollar figure tied to this. Another thing that we could use performance appraisals for is we can use them as goal setting for the next year. Hey, here's the goals we had last year. This is what changed throughout the year. Here's where we're going next year. And we're going to set some goals within that. And, you know, goal setting is an incredibly important piece to ensure that we have some accountability to those goals that are met. And of course, we want those goals to tie specifically into What are the business outcomes that an organization is looking to generate that are derived from an organization's strategic plan? And so when we look at those performance appraisals, what's the reason we're using them for? And then we're going to look at, is the current process meeting the needs or intention? And for most of the organizations we work with, it's not. So we want to kind of take a hybrid approach to say, great. What is the need? And maybe it's, hey, we want to have a formal documentation on an annual basis so that we really can see where performance is, but it needs to be part of a bigger picture for our team. So that's one of the key things that we can do and look at. And then the third question is, is this process supporting our organization and meeting the key business outcomes? If the answer is no, then you really want to look at this and say, how do we do that? You know, and there was a Forbes article where 13 key HR leaders in the industry, you know, weighed in on this. And is there a need for performance appraisals? Yeah, there is a need for them. However, the way that we're currently doing it, or 58% of us are still doing it, is not necessarily the best way to do it, right? So one of the key things that we see over and over and over again is guess what? Regular feedback is incredibly important. And a recent Gallup poll state asked the question, how often do you receive feedback from your manager? 7% of the respondents said daily, 19% of respondents said a few times a week, 27% said a few times a month, 28% said a few times a year, and 19% said once a year or less. Yikes, right? We're not providing that opportunity for our staff to really grow, develop, if we're not providing them feedback in that way to do that. So that's one of the key things that we need to do is review feedback given throughout the year. And as we do that in a performance evaluation process, everything that we're reviewing in that annual performance appraisal should be things that we've talked about throughout the year. And guess what? 
let's celebrate those successes. Let's celebrate those points where that employee may have missed the mark, but you know what they did do? We gave them feedback, they requested feedback, and they figured out how to turn it around so that they could use that failure as a springboard to success. And I'll say that again, when we can use our failures as springboards to success, what we're doing is we're learning. And guess what? We're all learning. And if we're creating a culture of accountability and leadership, learning is a key piece of that. And with that, we need to ensure that within our culture, we're not hiding our mistakes, but we're talking about them openly so our whole team can learn from that and not just one person at a time and it gets shoved under the rug, right? Another thing that the Forbes article talked about when we specifically look at annual performance reviews is to focus on documented goals. And that came from Tracy Cope from Zenefits. We also want to ensure that individuals coming into that annual performance evaluation know what it is that they're walking into, right? Because especially for our introverted folks inside of our organization, no agenda is typically no attenda, meaning our introverted individuals really need time to think and they think things through. So when we can provide that agenda ahead of time, or let's do one better, You know, let's give them the performance appraisal form and have them fill it out ahead of time. And then they're going to trade that with their manager when they're in that conversation, because then we can see, hey, what is this employee picking up as these are amazing successes over this year? These are areas where, you know what? These are my springboard areas this year. And guess what? These are my goals for next year. And this is how they specifically tie to the organizational goals and outcomes that we're looking for. What we just did there is two things. One, we engaged individuals beforehand. And we also created this process from being a one-way street, this is happening to you, or, oh my gosh, this performance evaluation is happening to me, to this is a two-way conversation that I have the privilege to have with my manager because we've created a collaborative partnership. And that's also something that Jenna Henriksen stated is make reviews a two-way street. And we want to look back and look forward. So when we're doing those things in our annual performance appraisals, what we're doing is we are creating a meaningful conversation that is one of many, many, many meaningful conversations throughout the year. So when we talk about leadership, right, and accountability, we're really looking at how do we do that on a day-to-day basis and how do we support our managers in doing that? So I want to shift to supporting our managers for a minute. And in the years that we've been, you know, training organizations and working with key leaders, one of the key things that is missing so often is our managers and leaders are not trained on how to give feedback. And guess what? Does anyone want to have those hard conversations to give that feedback? No, most of us will will shy away from that or shirk away from that and not have those conversations because, well, it's kind of scary, right? So we need to ensure that our managers have the training to truly be great leaders, that they've done the role playing with that. And, you know, if you have not trained your leaders on how to have conversations, on role-playing with them, hey, what are those key items that you need to have with an employee? One of the best ways that we've seen this done in some of our organizations is we will do our role-playing with our managers, and we'll do this a couple times a year, but anytime a manager either self-selects and says, hey, you know, I really need to have this conversation with an employee, or management leadership or HR says, all right, you know, we really need to to have this conversation because there's several performance issues here that we need to address, is that we have them role play that with another manager. And what that does is that allows them to learn while the stakes aren't as high as with that specific employee. 
So for the HR folks that are tracking this conversation from a compliance standpoint, it's going to reduce your risk, right? Because we're going to give them feedback. And the other thing we're doing is we are modeling for those managers how to have collaborative conversations to boost everyone's performance so that those things roll and they learn how to be those key leaders. And then the next thing that we want to really look at, so we've talked about training our managers. We've talked about what is the way that we set up our annual performance appraisal process and the fact that we want this to be a look back and a look forward. We want this to be, you know, a review of feedback given throughout the year, meaning, you know what, there are no surprises here. It's truly a review of feedback. We're looking at positives. And these should be equal, right? We're looking at what are the positive things this person's done? We're looking at what are the springboard moments and what are their goals? Here's something really important. There are four reasons why employees leave organizations. Employees leave organizations because one, they're a wrong fit for the role. They're not in the right role. Two, because they don't have a great relationship with their manager. Three, because of the team that they're on, and four, because of the culture of the organization. So as leaders, you have the ability to impact all four of those areas to truly engage your staff. And when you do that, you're going to help them elevate, be much more fulfilled in the work that they're doing, and you're going to get better performance out of them, right? Because they're going to be more engaged. So when we look at those key areas, you want to make sure that you're focusing on what those are. And guess what? If an employee's in the wrong role, then we need to be having that conversation before the annual performance review, right? So one of the things that we suggest is that you have some check-ins that happen on a bi-weekly basis with your staff. Have an agenda for this, right? You're seeing a theme here. We need to meet employees where they are, where their natural behavioral strengths are, not what ours are as managers or leaders, right? So when we're doing our bi-weekly meetings, it may be that we're starting to, you know, look at, hey, is there a gap between what this job needs and who you are naturally as a person? Meaning you're turning yourself into a pretzel to get this job done and you're becoming disengaged from it. And if you want a super easy button for that, we have a tool called the predictive index that can really help you figure that out. So with that, that's just something to really think about is, are they the right fit for the role? And we want to build that in. The next thing you want to build in is coaching. Do our managers know how to coach? What is coaching, by the way, right? And coaching is really that process of working with our staff for them to come up with their own solutions to the problems. And when we coach, we're not stating to them, hey, this is how you do it. We're asking them, what do you think? What would you do in this situation? What are some key things that you've already tried? How did it work? What would you do again? Are there things that you wouldn't do again or that you would try differently? And what you're doing is you are having them think on their own. You're also creating the space for them to grow so that they can step into much bigger positions. And if you've never been coached, Seek out someone that you can coach with, or if you're not sure what coaching is, because it's very, very different than consulting, there's many different programs that are out there that you can do that with, and we do have a coaching program within Elevated Talent as well. And then we're going to look at what roles does each party play in that annual performance review conversation, right? So, and guess what? That annual performance review conversation is a culmination of the bi-weekly check-ins that happen all of the time, right? And the bulk of this is really falling on the manager to be an amazing leader, an amazing coach, an amazing mentor to their staff. So with that, thank you so much for listening in to how we're digging into performance management leadership, and accountability. But before you go, we've got two key points that I want you to leave as takeaways. So for the executives listening in today, 
I really want you to pay attention to what are the training programs you have for your managers and leaders inside of your organization to be successful. Because if your leaders are not A, being coached themselves, and B, being taught how to truly coach and give feedback in a way that empowers others, that is going to be your first step and a key takeaway of today's conversation. The second key takeaway that we have is for HR leaders, and that is creating a process that is in collaboration with your leaders. Because here's the deal, you are an amazing support to the leaders inside your organization by providing the direction and the structure, and many times the sounding board and the coach to those leaders And make sure that you have that structure laid out and that you're truly collaborating with those leaders because guess what? As we're seeing today with our annual performance review, we don't want to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, but at the same time, it needs a change. And so when we can collaborate with our leaders, we're going to get much more mileage and create much more positive impact, employee engagement, and reach our business goals. So with that, thank you so much for joining us today in this edition of Talent Optimization. We hope that you have a great rest of your day. And if you are interested in our coaching program or in learning more about Predictive Index, those two key things are in the show notes. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Talent Optimization Podcast. You'll find more tools and resources for CEOs and HR professionals looking to bridge the strategies versus implementation gap of talent optimization at elevatedtalentconsulting.com. We've also created a free, valuable resource for you to begin bridging the gap called the Talent Optimization Foundation Membership Program. You can access it for free at elevatedtalentconsulting.com forward slash foundation. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode to learn more about talent optimization and creating a dream team for your organization.